Yeah. All right. God's good. So, so I'm, I'm going to not embarrass Jordan too much, but, uh, I had a story that I always like to share about the first time I met Jordan. I'm not going to do that to you this morning. Uh, but I want to say this, uh, you know, Jordan's the baby of the family with five kids and everybody, you know, obviously, you know, uh, it's such an honor to have him here with us this morning. The first time I met uh, his family, and the first time I met Jordan, he was three years old. He was about this tall and had a had a buzz cut, and uh, he was up on stage singing, "Do Lord, Oh Do Lord, Oh Do You Remember Me?" That was so. Uh, it was. It, it's been such an honor to watch him grow up and to become the godly man uh, that he's become. And and without getting too sentimental, we're, I just want to say thanks for coming and, and being with us this morning. It's an honor to have you and your beautiful wife, Courtney. So. Glad to have you guys this morning. Well, I'm going to share a few announcements with you guys, uh, so kind of gird your loins here. I've got a few that I've got to get through, okay? Um, tonight at 6 p.m., we're doing burgers and hot dogs and watermelon, okay? And then, of course, this is followed by the Foundations class uh, with Erwin Kane. And you're speaking on the covenant, uh, the, the new covenant tonight, right? The new covenant. It's going to be great, you guys. So uh, make plans to bring your family back tonight, 6 p.m., to have some great food and lots of fun and fellowship together. And then we're going to uh, get in here and, and get to hear uh, the Word of God, foundational teaching in the Word of God. Now, uh, throughout the summer, there are no evening win, uh, Bible study classes on, through the summer, okay? And uh, there's several reasons that we do that. We like to shift our focus in the summer on uh, things outside of these walls, all right? And, that, and that's really important to us. When, when we planted the church, one of the things we wanted to make sure that we wouldn't make it all about what was happening in this building, but rather we were going to uh, encourage people to go out and make a difference out there. So Wednesday nights, y'all, you get to be creative. You get to invite your family together. Don't let the fellowship in. Get together with folks. Go out there and, and figure out what God's calling you to do. Get out. There's, there's uh, ministries in town. There's, there's um, 
uh, charities that you can get involved in. Uh, so you guys pray about what God wants you to do and be a part of this summer and then get involved and do that. And then, look, Wednesday night's going to kick back off again before you know it, and, and we'll all get together and fellowship and talk about what God did with all of us through, uh, throughout the summer, okay? So we, we want to tell you to do this, though, encourage you to bring your families on Sunday nights uh, to the meals. That's going to continue uh, throughout the entire summer. Uh, we're going to eat together and have a lot of fellowship together. So that's your time to really get together with your church family outside of Sunday morning. Okay. Um, so we encourage you guys to do that. Now, um, Mary Poppins, uh, we worked, had a work day yesterday and had several people show up and we built a bunch of chimneys for Mary Poppins. And this is just one way that the church gets to go outside of the walls in the summer and, and make a difference in the lives of people. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but... Uh, but one of our, the main parts of our vision at this church is the arts. It's music, it's, uh, it's video production, it's uh, audio production, it's writing songs, all of those things that we want to try to infuse God's word, the truth of God's word, into the arts and do that out in the community. Well, the way that we're getting involved with Shining Star Productions is we get involved, we serve, we help, we offer their, their, uh, them our facilities and, uh, and then we get to rub shoulders and elbows with them and, and just love on them and serve them. And through that, uh, God has used that in so many ways. Uh, there are actually several people in the room today that were not, would not have been in the room had we not had some sort of connection with, with Shining Star. And that's what it's all about, is finding new and different ways to get out there and reach people and make a difference in our community, okay? Now, uh, there's a couple things I want you to add to your calendars right away. On the 24th of this month, we are going to be ordaining uh, Benny, it's, my, my notes say Benny Lamborghini. So apparently another uh, fatality of autocorrect. Um, so Benny Lamborghini is going to be is going to be ordained, and uh, and then we're gonna we're we're gonna ordain uh, Ed um, Ed and Linda Roseman actually have a ministry. You, many of you guys know this, where they go out and they they teach on end time prophecy, and we're gonna ordain Ed in the gospel ministry to go out there and do that as well. So we're excited about that. Um, and then September the second is what. And, and I want this to just be on your radar, okay? September the 2nd, uh, we're having what's called Legacy Sunday. And this is going to be a time where you invite all of your family, all right? Because what we're going to focus on that day is how to build a godly legacy within your family, a legacy of godliness that will last for generations. And we're really going to focus on that that day. So we want you to invite, go ahead and make plans and, and put it on your family's radar that on September 2nd, that's Labor Day weekend, so they don't have to rush home Sunday. They can probably have Monday off, right? So invite your family and put that on their radar so that they know that's what's coming, all right? That's, believe it or not, that's all I've got for you this morning. Would you stand to your feet as we continue in worship? I lay my burdens at your feet. I'm letting go of all the things I can't control. In my frailty, Lord, I find your strength. I am dependent on a love that won't let go. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Oh, you are my so I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, oh, you are my peace. I lay my burdens at your feet. I'm letting go of all the things I can't control. In my frailty, Lord, I find your strength. I am dependent on a love that won't let go. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Oh, you are my peace. So I trust you. I 
trust you, Father, I trust you. Oh, come on, can we sing that this morning? So I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Oh, you are my peace. So I trust you, I trust you, Father, I trust you. Oh, you are my peace. Yeah. Are you weary? Come and lay your burdens down. This yoke is easy. There is rest to be found. Yeah. Are you weary? Come and lay your burdens down. This yoke is easy. There is rest to be found. Are you weary? Are you weary? Come and lay your burdens down. This yoke is easy. There is rest to be found. Yes. Are you weary? Come and lay your burdens down. This yoke is easy. There is rest to be found. So I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Oh, you are my peace. So I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Oh, you are my peace. All this pain, I wonder if I ever find my way. I wonder if my life could really change.
because of your goodness. You make beautiful things. You make beautiful things out of us. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, God. Yes, you do.
continue in a spirit of worship right now as we have a, a time of taking communion together and the way we do it around here is we've got tables set up front here we've got some uh, toward the back there and we want you to get in your family group uh, or whoever that you came with or someone that you love and trust get together with them and uh, as family groups you can go ahead and start going to one of these tables and then here in just a few minutes uh, I'll lead you through the process of the communion meal I just ask that the leaders of the group just go ahead and pray with your group there uh, as we get started, and, uh, and let's have a time together this morning as a family and in your own little family groups um, of the Covenant and Meal, all right? You can go ahead and go. This act is symbolic of so many things in the life of, of a Christian. Primarily, it's symbolic of our freedom and what Jesus did on the cross to set us free from all of the things that we so often struggle with. When we forget who we are, we forget that our identity is in Christ Jesus alone. And what you're doing as you take this this symbolic bread into you, you're taking his body into you, you're his DNA, his, you are being transformed into the image of Jesus himself. That's what you're saying is I am committing myself to all that he's done for me, I'm resting in that. And by the blood that he shed, the fact that uh, his blood, every single drop that poured out was for you and for your freedom to, to give you a life of freedom, the abundant life, the best life ever, amen? So as we take this together as a family, in Matthew 26, it says this. Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me.
And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, remember that you are free. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can focus on your sacrifice. Lord, that you poured out your blood every single drop was because you loved us so much that we're precious to you, Lord Jesus. So, Father, right now, as a family, we lift you up, we thank you, and we remember that we are free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can stay there. I'm going to ask Brother uh, Benny to come forward. There he is. He's going to tell you what's next. Good morning, everybody. So good to see everybody. Um, Who brought a friend with them this morning? Hands. Who's new here this morning for the first time? Okay, you're not, you're not. But anyway, uh, people, this is our church family, and uh, I get so excited Sunday mornings. Can't wait to get here and see all the people that we've come to know and love over the last year. And uh, it's just wonderful to see everybody here, and um, I I just can't tell you how much I love you all, and I know I forget a lot of your names. But I do know you, and uh, anyway, good to have you here. Come next weekend because we're bringing more, and I bringing some special guests. They're coming uh, from a long way, so we want you all to meet them. So if you want to meet them? I'm not going to tell any more, but you're going to have to be here next Sunday. So come for that, and we're going to take about a seven or eight minute break now. We call it our BRB, which stands for Be Right Back. So go and get a cup of coffee. Um, This is your time to go and love on somebody that you haven't seen for a while, somebody that you have, maybe your husband or your wife or your son or daughter or something like that. So just take that time, check on your baby in Christ or whatever, and fill your coffee cup and come on back and get ready to hear an awesome word. So go for it.
Eagle blink the light. We're going to get started here in just a moment. If you guys would uh, make your way back to your seats, we gave you seven minutes. If you do great with seven minutes, then maybe we'll bump it up to seven minutes and 30 seconds. We've been talking a lot about freedom lately. And, uh, you know, tithing, giving in the church often gets a bad rap because, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, that preacher just wants to reach in my pocket, you know. And uh, I can assure you that that, is, uh, that could be no further from the truth. It's, it's just, um, it's one of those things where giving is, is an act of worship. That's all there is to it. And it's a sign of freedom financial freedom in your own life, that you understand that you're a steward, not an owner. And as you, uh, as you are a good steward, then you give out of uh, your abundance, knowing that everything that you've been given is given to you from God and God alone, right? So uh, anyway, this is an opportunity to worship, and I just want to keep our perspective in that, that we're worshiping together just like we are when we sing songs or we listen to a sermon preached, giving uh, out of our abundance is is our opportunity to worship. Pastor Brad? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and worship you. We thank you for this opportunity to sacrifice. We thank you for this opportunity to show that, yes, our treasure is where our heart is, but that treasure is people, not money. We thank you, Father, that we can just uh, offer up these funds this morning and, and give them in a way that we know that, that you will use them in this community and in this family, Father. Thank you so much. We ask that you bless it. We ask that you bless it with the sermon on, and financial discernment on each family here. We ask your blessings for the financial freedom in every family here. That we will all be free yes. from debt, this church and yes. this family and everything. Yes. That we owe nobody anything. Is that proper English? But you know what I mean, Lord, freedom, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First of all, I just want to thank all of you guys for, for coming this morning. I realize that there's like 100 billion different things that you could have chosen to do, but you chose to bring your family and, and, uh, and, and kind of hang out with the, the best folks in Hopkins County and, and even some pretty good folks from the other counties around us. Uh, won't name any names there, but uh, you know who you are. But um, most importantly this morning, you have decided to come into a family of God and put yourself under the teaching or the proclamation of the truth of God's word in your life. That right there is so very important. And my hope is that you guys uh, study God's word on your own throughout the week uh, but this is just a time to solidify, to confirm in you, God, the Holy Spirit to, to confirm things in you that you're already studying and learning outside of the walls of this church, okay? But putting yourself in a, in a situation where you're hearing, hearing God's word preached, that is such an important, that is the first step in the battle of living the life that, that God wants you to live. And so just by coming to church, you're, you're taking a, a, the most important uh, step in being around God's family and being encouraged and, uh, and having the word of God proclaimed over you. So important. So uh, before I share, I get into what God's laid on my heart this morning, I just want to um, tell you that there's going to be a, a point in time later on in the message where I may ask you to respond. And, and when that time comes, and I'm just giving you a heads up so you know that that time is coming, as you're hearing God's word taught that there would be a, a, a point towards the end of the message that I'm going to ask you to look at your own life and, and kind of draw some comparisons and take stock of, of your life and see the areas in your life where maybe you're struggling with some of the things that I talk about today. Um, maybe even if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says today is the day of salvation that there's no better time to accept the Lord, there's no better time to take that first step than today. Uh, I want to start in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. We've been camped out on this verse for a while, and man, you could camp out on this verse for a year and just keep, uh, you know, keep 
going over it and going over it, and there's still, it's so rich, and you just have to keep reminding yourself of the truth of this passage. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, it says this, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. There's a few things here that that I've pointed out over the past several weeks that I want you to notice and I want you to take to heart. First of all, it says, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. The whole point of him coming here and dying on the cross was for freedom that he set us free. And then it follows up with that and it says, therefore, keep standing firm, which implies that, that you have a job to do in the fact that you have to keep believing the promises of God and resting in the work of Jesus Christ. So you... And then it says, do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. So here's the deal. Jesus already set you free. You're free. Once you've accepted Jesus, if the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. But it's saying here that you can pick up those old chains, the the yoke of slavery, self-imposed slavery, and you can put that back on your shoulders again, and you can live in, in slavery even as a follower of Jesus Christ. And so in this passage in Galatians... Paul is is saying to us, do not revert back to the old way of living. Do not pick up those chains of slavery again. Well, what would those chains of slavery be? Anything that steals your joy out of life. Anything that distracts you from being who God created you to be or, or doing what God has called you to do. All right? Anything that causes you to draw back uh, in not in boldness, to have a spirit of timidity, anything that causes you to pull back in fear or doubt or worry or anxiety, those things are not of God. And culture will tell you that that's just something that you have to deal with. But that is a lie. You don't have to deal with those things. As a follower of Jesus Christ, His will is that you live completely in freedom. All right? So today, specifically, we're going to talk about worry and anxiety, and I call these ugly twin sisters, right? The, every single person in this room deals with worry and anxiety. And uh, we spend hours of the day, I don't know about you, but I know there have been times in my life, I've spent hours of the day, um, and I know some people who spend hours of the day, imagining all the terrible things that could possibly go wrong, right? I mean, it takes some real work to be that creative, to think about all the things that could possibly go wrong, and then they dwell on that, and it causes them to be in bondage. It causes them uh, to live in fear, and that's not what God wants us uh, to be. They're immobilized by fear, and if if you're bound up by fear or worry or doubt or anxiety, if you're bound up by those things, you cannot. It is impossible to do what God has called you to do as a believer. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not flesh and blood, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. That means, and we've talked about this, the, the ways of thinking that, that, is, is built, that we build up in our own minds, these are wrong ways of thinking. Because the society or the world around us or the culture around us tells us that we're supposed to think a certain way and those things are lies. Look at what it says here. Those are the, the fortresses that we build up in our mind. It says we are destroying speculations. All of those imaginations that you, the creativity that you've uh, come up with in your own mind about all the possible things that can go wrong, those are speculations. It says every lofty thing that has raised itself up against the knowledge of God. And let me just tell you something. Anytime... Any time that you worry and you're not trusting in God, that is, that's not living in humility. That's not living in freedom. That's just simply not trusting God. Okay? So it says that we are to take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. That's where the rubber meets the road. So we can live our lives and say that we're believers and say that we love Jesus with all our heart, but then... If we don't take every thought captive and and subject it to the obedience of Jesus Christ, in other words, what would Jesus have me do in this situation? How would Jesus have me think? Well, he wants you to be free, and he wants you to be full of joy, and he wants you to have purpose, and he wants that to rub off on everybody around you, okay? And and if you're bound up with with fear and worry and doubt, you simply cannot do that. I'm going to give you guys some advice, okay? Okay. Uh, it's really great advice. You might actually find it surprising. 
And at first, it seems a little wrong, okay? It seems just a little bit wrong. Uh, are you guys ready? Okay. I'm not ready yet. I'm going to share that with you later. I'm not quite ready. I'll give it to you. You can, you can just wait for that. I'll have the perfect time to throw that out there, okay? So uh, you were on the edge of your seat, weren't you? Um, here's the deal. You, you guys don't need my advice. What you need is you need to hear from the Word of God. You need to know what the Bible says. And if you know what the Bible says, that is the truth that sets you free. Remember that scripture that says every, that we have to uh, basically have the mind of Christ. We take every thought captive, subjecting it to the knowledge of God, okay? We have to know what God's word says so when we capture a thought that we know is wrong, we can hold it up in light of scripture and say, that's absolutely wrong, that is not good for me, and you toss it aside, and you believe the truth of God's word instead. All right, so in order to know how to properly think about worry and fear and doubt and all the things that we deal with, we have, let's go see what Jesus said about it. Let's see what, you know, the creator of the universe said about it. He knows all things. So turn to the book of Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. Now, I don't know how many of you guys in this room deal with worry, but I know a lot of people that struggle with it, a lot of people that deal with anxiety and some that even deal with panic attacks and, and fear that is crippling fear. And I'm just here to tell you, as a follower of Jesus, that is not meant for you. That is, I mean, the lost, they need to be afraid because they're lost. They don't know Jesus. But if you know Jesus, there's no excuse. So in the book of Mark, chapter 4, 18 and 19, it's the parable of the sower and the soils. And we're going to kind of pick up here um, in, at, toward the end of the parable. And Jesus says, And the others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns... These are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So here's the thing. Just take a few, a few takeaways from this passage here. They heard the word. It says, but the worries of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the, desi the desire for other things... It actually chokes out the word of God in your life. When you worry about things that you're not supposed to be worried about and you're taking the ball out of Jesus' court, in other words, then you are actually allowing the troubles and the worries of this world to choke out God's word, the effectiveness of God's word in your life, the freedom that God's word has to offer in your life. So you can hear the truth all you want. But if you never take action in your life to start living it out, to really start training yourself to think the right way, to live in freedom, then you're going to keep struggling with the same old struggles over and over and over again. Okay? So we build those strongholds, those fortresses of wrong thinking, and, and God's Word is what pulls those things down, the truth of God's Word. And, and it's. I wish I could say that you could pull down a stronghold and then never have to deal with it again, but that's not the way it works. Unfortunately, we keep, we keep working at building those strongholds, and that's why we need to be in God's Word every single day so that we're continuously pulling down those strongholds because the enemy is not going to let up. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to totally ruin your life and, and, and get you so bound up and burdened that you can do yourself or nobody else around you any, any good. But God has a different plan for your life. All right. So here's a question for you. What if worry and anxiety in your life is caused by the fact that you've been deceived and you've, you've got a misplaced desire in your life? You've made it a, a priority to attain riches and wealth or the things of this world. And, and I'm not the one who connected money and stuff with worry. God's Word did that. Okay? Okay. But for some reason, that's so tied together in the truth of God's word. But what if it, what if your desire, misplaced desire on those things, your focus is on the wrong thing, and you could recalibrate your focus and then live in freedom and not have to be bound up to worry and fear and doubt in your life? You've, maybe you've burdened your shoulders with the wrong kinds of relationships. Or, you know, in our society, you know, they want you to get in debt. They want you to, to buy that bigger house and go in debt for that newer car. And, and y'all, I'm just here to tell you there is truth, and then there's what the world's preaching, okay? And you need to know what the truth is, and don't get yourself in over your head, because that is what causes worry 
and anxiety. Even the drive for success in this world can overtake you. It can consume you. And here's the thing. Jesus never said, I want you to be a success in the way that the world defines success. What he wants you to be is a good steward. Not just a good steward, but a great steward, okay? And there's a, there's a truth in this that I want you to understand. When you're a great steward, the result is always going to be success and satisfaction, but it's the God kind of success and satisfaction. It's, it's fulfillment and purpose in your life that you can attain nowhere else and no, no other way. If you purpose to make Jesus your first love, then out of that flows the abundant life. Okay? So if you're focused only on the wealth and the riches and the stuff, then your focus is on the wrong thing. But if you focus on the right thing, then all those things, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, all those things just kind of flow out of that. They flow to you and out of that to everyone else. Amen? All right. Here's one thing that I'd like you guys to pray about and keep in mind as a steward, okay? And I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth this morning, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, but God's Word has a way of doing that, doesn't it, at times when we look at our life. Every single thing that you bring into your life, with that comes responsibility. There's no way around it. When you decide to have children, obviously, I mean, that's a... That's a given, right? You are now responsible for that child to feed them and clothe them and get them through. Hopefully, they will survive until they're 18 years of age, right? And they move out of the house, and then you're like, whew, I made it through that, right? So, uh, so that's just one example. But every single thing that you bring into your life, you have a responsibility to steward it properly, okay? And steward it well. And, and here's the thing. This is just the hard truth, truth of it. There's only so much one person can steward well. So you need to be wise in what you in, invest your life and your breath and your passion into. Because every single... You spread yourself too thin, I guarantee you worry and anxiety will be the result. Okay? So that's, y'all, mismanaged freedom. When you miss... You have the freedom, the choice to do whatever you want. You're big boys and girls. You can do whatever you want with your life. But there are also, with that freedom, if, if you do not use your freedom wisely, then with that comes burden and bondage and consequences. Do you all understand? So sometimes if you choose to make your life too complicated, then you suffer because of that. And I'm, all I'm saying this morning is I want you to be wise in what you choose to invest your life in. And that the things that you're bringing into your life are because God led you to do so. And not for your own wants and your own desires, but because God has a plan for you and he wants you to be a good steward of that so that you can affect the lives of everyone around you. That's truly what it's all about. So sometimes the beauty is in the simplicity of, of just letting some things go. And saying, I don't need that in my life anymore, and I'm going to cut that out of my life. All right? So, Jesus says, if we want to know what Jesus said about worry, he says worry is needless. And, and if we know Jesus, we have to know that not one of us needs to worry. You don't need to worry. There's no need to worry. It's, it's pointless, right? It's useless. Worry is needless. Worry is useless. It has no purpose. It adds no value to your life whatsoever. As a matter of fact, the only thing it does is bring negativity into your life and bondage in, into your life. And it's also, worry is a sign that you have forgotten who you are and whose you are. If you worry, that's the evidence that you have let things into your... You are serving the wrong master, okay? So let's... I want to reference what I'm talking about. There In Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 through 34, here's what Jesus says. These are red letters, guys. This is not me. This is Jesus. Matthew 6, 24 through 34. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So here we see it connected once again to desires of the world or wealth or stuff, okay? And then Jesus says this, For this reason, because you can't serve two masters, for this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life. Choose the right master and you have no need to worry. Choose the wrong master, you got a problem. 
Okay? So, uh, he says, As to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for the body as to what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So, other, other, in other words, there are so many more important things out there than just those physical things. He says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly, heavenly Father feeds them. The point he's making here is they don't even take the time to prepare for the next day, okay? When we're checking our credit scores every day and we're putting all this money in the bank and we're, you know, and we're so, and there's nothing wrong with that stuff. I want you all to understand this, okay? But the, the important thing is the focus, what are you focused on, and, and are you looking at those finances, or are you looking at Jesus knowing that he is your supply? Amen. And if everything else, else just poof, disappeared, he is still your supply. The truth of that doesn't change, okay? So basically, the fact that you have the ability to create wealth, you have the ability uh, to, to make money for yourself, that's an added bonus, okay? Even if you didn't, that's, that's the cool thing about it, even if you didn't and everything just disappeared, God promises that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. That's just the truth of the matter. So that's never an excuse to forget where all of our blessings come from, okay? Um, real freedom comes from having your focus in the right place and you being able to do what God has called you to do. That's real freedom, and that's truly what it's all about. And any time that we're focusing on the wrong things, we're focusing on the wrong master. But Jesus said there's never a need to worry. There's no need to worry. Jesus continues, Who of you being worried can add one single hour to your life? Like it does you no good whatsoever, and it does not belong in, in a believer's life. So you have to deal with it. If you are struggling with worry, you have to deal with it. So think about this. I read this yesterday and I thought it was kind of cool. It says, today is the tomorrow that you were worried about yesterday. And look how great it's going so far. So you don't have a need to worry. I mean, yeah, it's going, going pretty good so far. So, um, and then Jesus continues to say, why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, they do not spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the fur uh, furnace, he will, ha will he not much more clothe you? All right? There's a secret to all of this. And then he says, you of little faith. And that's, that's what's important is this all hinges on your faith. That's it. It hinges on your faith in God. And if you're dealing with worry and anxiety and fear and doubt, it means that you are not putting your faith in God and God alone. And, and I'm going to follow up with what Jesus says here. And I love this. He says, do not worry then saying, what will we eat or what will we drink for what will we or what will we wear for clothing for the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. Now, what Jesus was saying here was, hey, you know those barbarians down the road, those Cretans, those, uh, you know, the people who have never met me, you know those guys, that's how you're acting when you worry. You're acting like you don't even know me. You're acting like heathens, like you don't even know the truth. But you do know the truth. You know the truth. So when we worry, we have forgotten who we are in Christ that we're his sons and his daughters, just like we sang earlier, that he's got it handled, y'all. We don't need to worry. When we worry, we're not abiding in Christ. We've disconnected ourselves from him. We've separated ourselves from who he is when we choose to worry, and we let that mess our lives up, okay? In Romans 14, 23, it says, Whatever is not faith is sin. Whatever is not faith is sin. So there's no way around it. When we worry, we're actually acting like sinners. We're acting like we were before we were born again. Okay? And, and that's why it's so important. You know the truth. Now let's look at the end of verse 32. He says, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. God knows. So when you pray, He already knows what you need. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. 
Each day has enough trouble of its own. He knows exactly what you need far more than you know what you need. So when you pray, pray with the confidence of knowing that God knows exactly what you need. All right? There are many things that I've prayed for in the past that God didn't give me, and I thank God. It's like hear that old Garth Brooks song, Sometimes I Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. Absolutely. How many of you guys have been there? It's like, yeah, I prayed for some things that I really didn't need, and God answered it the way God wanted to answer it, and he blew my mind. Uh, this, This facility right here is one of those things. I mean, you know, you think you know what you need, and I'm over there looking at all kinds of buildings and patches of land, and I'm trying to figure out where we're going and what we're doing and what God wants Bright Star Church to be and, and all this, and, and all of a sudden, you know, I get a phone call, and God's like, there you go. This is what he wants you to do. This is the next step. This is what God wants to do, right? So he knows exactly what you need far more than you do. So what's the solution? How can you and I live our lives free of, of worry? How can we live our lives free of worry? It's so simple and so profound, and it's right here in verse 33. Jesus himself says, red letters, but seek first. Everybody say, seek first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. If your focus is in the right place, all of those, the best things, the abundant life, it flows to you. And it's just going to happen. There's no way around. So if you align your life with Scripture, and be careful always, you know, don't always define this this supply of God in the terms of money, okay? You need to understand that, yes, He's going to bless you like that, but He's going to give you so much more than what you expect and in ways that you cannot even fathom, all right? So don't limit God in your faith when you're having faith in Him to supply all of your needs. In other words... Seek Jesus each and every day. Abide in Christ. Have faith in God and he'll take care of you. That's a promise. Now, I'm going to get to my advice now. Now that I've laid that groundwork and you know where my advice is coming from, it's based in the word of God. Here's what I'm going to say. Embrace, this is hard, embrace the mystery of whatever comes in your life. Embrace the mystery of whatever comes, whether it's the absolute best Or you know that at times in this life, you are going to face challenging times. There's no way around it. So whether it's the absolute best or the worst case scenario, you stare that down in faith with no fear, no worry, no doubt whatsoever because you know that Jesus has got your back. But here's the thing. If you will learn how to be content, it will change your life. Learn how to be content and your life will be transformed. There's nothing wrong with praying for things that you want or need. The Bible says that. We're going to get to that here in just a moment. But you just need to understand that contentment is the key. And I'm not going to say that. I want want to show you in Scripture so you're not thinking that that's Michael Branch saying that. Let's see what Paul says about it. Or we think it was Paul in the book of Hebrews, but we don't know for sure. All right. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. Here's what he says. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you, so that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid, no matter what even man does to me. I will not be afraid. The evidence in your life that you are free from financial worry, from any kind of worry or anxiety, is the fact that you are content. In this day, in this hour, I'm content. Now look just a little bit further down here. Paul says this. Oh, well, actually in uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians 4, 6. It says, be anxious for nothing, for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Tell Him what you want. Tell Him what you need. Make those requests known to Him and be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about it all. Put the ball in His court and let God do what God promises He will do. And then it says just a little bit further down, and this is what I want you to see here today. It's so good. Then he says in this verse, he says 11 through 13, Not that I speak from want, but I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am in. 
whether it's the absolute best or the worst case scenario. And then he goes, he lines it out here. He says, I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. You see what he's doing here? He's saying it doesn't matter where on the gambit. It doesn't matter where on the scale I'm living. I'm content, okay? He's saying in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret, the secret. There's the secret, y'all. This should be a best-selling book right here, the secret. I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, of both having abundance and suffering need. And then this beautiful nugget of wisdom that we quote all the time in Scripture, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's not talking about getting a, a contract in to play for the NBA, right? <laughs> Although you can pray for that, and, you know, if you have the talent and you're willing to work hard, then God could bless you uh, with that, right? But what he's saying here is that when he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, he's tying it to the fact that he's content, yeah. that he can face any obstacle, anything in life, and he does not have to be afraid and he doesn't have to worry. You can throw whatever you want at my life. You just bring it on. And because I know Jesus is standing over my shoulder, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to worry at all whatsoever. All right? Because he's got my back. I'm, I'm here to tell you all, the last few years of our lives as a family have been so precious in trusting God and just watching Him provide for us. And just the simplicity of saying, Lord, I have no clue where some of this stuff is going to come from. You know our needs. And then to watch Him come through in faithfulness every time blows my mind over and over and over again. And actually, he, in a manner of speaking, it makes me feel really stupid that I even doubted in the first place. And that's what he wants for each and every one of us, that we would not be tied to this, this strain, this burden in our lives. He wants you to be content at all times in whatever circumstance and to trust in Jesus alone. That's it. That's all. That's simple. Just for a moment, I want you guys to think in closing. I want you to think through a few things with me. I want you to look at your own life, some of the areas in your life where you may be dealing with worry and anxiety or fear, okay? And remember these things that we've learned this, this morning. Worry can choke the Word of God, the, the impact of the Word of God out of your life. Worry can choke that and kill it, and it will have no Im impact, no flow in your life because you allow yourself to be, uh, to be worrisome, to have anxiety, panic attacks, whatever, okay? The word itself is life. Jesus said, these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. That's just the truth. The word of God is life to you. And if you allow worry to choke that out, then your life is going to be tough. But if you learn the secret to be content and to trust God no matter what, it is. Guys, it's a life and death situation. It truly is when you look at it like that. Remember that God didn't call you to be a success in the way the world defines success. He called you to be a great steward of all that he's blessed you with. And if you will do that, if you will be wise in what you allow into your life and you will steward that well, pull out the weeds, right, and prune those limbs so that the, you can bear fruit, that's what it's all about, stewardship. You need to pray in your own life, what do I need to prune? What weeds do I need to pull? How do I need to trust God even more so than I'm doing right now? Don't struggle to keep up with the Joneses. Don't fall into that trap. You pray about every single thing that God wants you to have and then be free in that. Like, if I want to drive used cars, I'm going to drive used cars, and I don't care who, you know, who cares that I should be driving a new car, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get it. You know, people, and there's nothing wrong with new cars. If God says, hey, go buy a new car, walk in freedom. Go buy a new car. Buy a fancy new car. Walk in freedom. Be free. That's the point. When, and, and don't let what other people think of you get, don't worry. That's, that's a worry. That's a sermon all of its own. It's worrying about what other people think. Amen? 
So we need to deal with that as well. But do what you do because God has, has freed you and, let, and, and given you the freedom to do those things. Okay? The secret is to be content. Learn how to be content and remind yourself that you should be content no matter what. Even when you are facing challenges and obstacles and life hurts, be content in that moment knowing that you are in a season and God's about to blow your mind because He's about to come through for you in a way that He never has before. Okay? You can handle it because He can handle it. That's the bottom line. It was for freedom that Christ set you free. And He wants you to stay free. He doesn't want you to pick up those chains of slavery again. The whole point of the cross. Listen to me. The whole point of the cross was to set you free. So when you pick those chains back up, you're saying that the cross was not enough. You're living out that evidence in your life. And y'all, the cross is enough. Practice it. Just say, I'm not, I don't care about that anymore. Praise Jesus, I am free. I'm not going to let that weigh me down or bother me anymore. I'm free. I'm free. Learn how to say it. I'm free. And let things go. Would you guys bow with me this morning? I mentioned earlier that there was going to be a time when I would ask you to respond to the truth. And you guys, if I'm, as I'm you know, reading Scripture and you're going through this with me, you, and the Holy Spirit's been kind of nudging you and talking to you and you're looking at your life and you know there are areas in your life that you are struggling with worry and fear and doubt and anxiety. Only you know it's between you and God. But if God's been speaking to you this morning and saying to you, the Holy Spirit's been telling you there are things in your life, there's worry and anxiety in your life that you need to lay down today, that you need to get out of your life. If you struggle with worry and anxiety... I'm going to ask you to take the hand of someone next to you that you love and trust, that will pray with you, that will, that will go to battle with you so that you can make a difference right now in this moment. If you struggle with worry, it may be your husband, your wife, it may be your son, your daughter, your friend, doesn't matter. If you struggle with worry or, or anxiety in your life and you want to be free from that, would you just take the hand of someone next to you that you love and trust and care about? And I'm going to pray in just a few moments. And I also want to pray for anybody in this room who hasn't yet made a decision to follow Jesus. Because honestly, you are never going to be free. You are never going to live the life that Jesus wants you to live and have the abundant life that you were meant to have unless you lay it all down, first of all, at the foot of the cross. You accept what Jesus came to do. Father, I thank you so much for the cross. Lord, we thank you for the stripes on your back. We thank you for the bruises on your body, the nails in your hands and feet, Lord Jesus, and, the, and that spear in your side. We thank you that because of your sacrifice, Lord, we are free. We are truly set free. Lord, I pray right now for those in this room who may not know you, that today would be the day of salvation, that they would just make up their mind. Today's the day I want to become a disciple of Christ. Today's the day I want to follow Jesus. Lord, I pray if there's anybody in that room, in this room, in that situation, Lord Jesus, that you would give them the courage to do that today. And Lord, I pray right now they would make up their mind to follow you. Lord, and for those today who struggle with anxiety and with worry in their life, Lord God, I pray right now, Lord Jesus. In this moment, impress upon them that they are already free, Lord Jesus. That they don't need to fight those battles anymore. You won every battle the moment you said it is finished. Lord, give them courage to speak the truth of your word in their life, to fear, to worry, to doubt, to anxiety, to panic, all these things, Lord Jesus, that just that burden them, this, this, the chains around their feet, the things that hold them back, Lord God. And I pray that you will give them the strength to not, and the presence of man, mind, Lord, in your spirit, to not ever pick those chains up again. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that everybody's eyes are open to what you truly did for us on the cross and that we would walk in freedom, that you set us free. It's over. It's done. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
So this morning, if you prayed and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you've never done that before, I want you to come tell me, Pastor Brad, uh, Krista Faith, somebody, maybe not one of us, but somebody that you love and trust, tell them, and then let's have a conversation about it. I'd like to share with you the next steps in what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to be a follower of Jesus. And as we go out these doors today, I want you to be encouraged. And I really want you to put into practice what God's Word says, that you can let this fear and worry and anxiety and panic, all these things that we so often deal with, you can lay that stuff down and never pick it up again because you are free. So let's go today encouraging one another in that truth that if Jesus Christ has set you free, you are free indeed. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, on your way out the door, hug somebody's neck. Tell them that you love them. Let's go out there and make a difference. The mission field is right outside those double glass doors. So go make a difference in someone's life today. Until tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll see you for burgers and dogs and watermelon. All right? God bless you. Thanks,